Welcome to Draw Process. I'm Ike. I'm going to draw page 58 of First Sun and Sword today. The script. Farah, are you sure? Sword, yes, I know this woman from years ago. I will not kill her. And then Farah explains um, what they're doing. The, the, the captain of this vessel and I reached an understanding. He will take us across the sea to Asima. Sword, well done, Farah. They board the boat. The men on the board boat uh, look surprised, but not uh, a danger. So capture the surprise of the people on the boat that have agreed, perhaps under threat, to assist them in getting across the sea. Make it clear that they are surprised, um, but not in at risk of attacking our characters. So... I wouldn't want the reader to get to that moment and think, oh, it looks like they might betray them, they might attack them. Of course, betrayal is always possible, but I don't want to highlight that in any way. Um, the point is more that they are kind of in awe that they can tell here that King Croc has been defeated and that it was done by this man and a boy. And thus the, the myth and the story will spread, right? Um, and this is a nice moment too, because early in the in this issue, Sword is complaining about the kind of people in the world today uh, who live in Crocodile City. Fair has thrown out several insults at people that serve the Crocs for personal gain, calling them scale lickers. And this is also a moment where, when I made my final choice of dialogue, I was able to. Um, give the people, the common people of this world, uh, another moment in the spotlight uh, where she comments that they are not um, evil men, that they're not just personally interested in cowards, um, that they, uh, it wasn't just under threat that they're doing this, that they, uh, they're, um, they didn't like King Croc and they're, pre they're happy to see this change come, right? even if they are scared. As I do these thumbnails, I you'll notice I'll draw uh, one idea for the shot and then erase it and try a different one. Um, sometimes a completely different one. Uh, something I've noticed is when I draw figures like these here, a lot of times they're just blobs. There's, It looks like I can't draw figures very well. Uh, if you would just look at that, but um, I think it's important to think of your figures and your buildings and everything in the shot as blobs to a degree. You're thinking of the composition of the image, and um, and if you get bogged down in the details of trying to work out the pose that they have or something, then you're going to miss the overall composition. Uh, and you'll see, I, the reason I'm erasing and trying this again is to keep trying until I get the composition right. Um, it's, it's a challenging shot. Um, th there's challenges to the perspective, to the poses. And um, that can all be worked out later. The, the most important thing is the challenge of the composition. Um, staying true to some degree to to reality, to perspective, to the shape of this boat and where people would be. But I'm trying to capture um, quite a, a challenging angle there. Uh, figures in the foreground and in the background that all are the, uh, the boatsmen. And then in the middle, a sword, sun, and Farah. So the men in the foreground on the left, they're going to be one of them especially is very large in the shot because it's kind of right over his uh, hip or arm that we see the shot. And then I've just got to position everyone where, where this works, where I can see every single figure. They can overlap to some degree, not too much. Um, shadows are placed uh, well to, to add depth and weight to like foreground. Um, I'm going to try to put the figures in the foreground mostly in shadow. Uh, that happens to be true to uh, the environment, that, that the sun is coming from behind them on the left here. 
Um, but by putting them mostly in shadow, there's, I'm going to separate the foreground and background. Same thing in the very first panel here. Uh, Farah is in the foreground, and I'm going to throw her back entirely in shadow, somewhat true to the environmental conditions. But that is to separate her from uh, the, the midground. Um, if you can do that in your inks, much less will have to be done in the color to do that. Like, it can be done in color, but I don't enjoy um, working on the color to, to accomplish that. I would rather get it done in the inks. Um, I also like how inks are much more like handwriting. They're, they're more symbolic to me. Uh, the, their line and block, but they, they feel like um, symbolic handwriting. They, they communicate more directly to me than, than colors do. Okay. Let's see. I have been thinking about what I need to do with the, with the marketing and the printing of my book and things like that. And it has me looking more seriously at what it is I'm really trying to accomplish. What's really important to me? Um, where does money and supporters come into play? Um, I feel that if I can answer those questions honestly and clearly, then that is the best position to be able to figure out uh, those other questions. I think when I started this YouTube, for example, there was the feeling that I needed to share what I do. There was a, there was a conviction that artists need to share what they do uh, with each other and with, with the world in a different way than what we've done in the past. And that what I have to contribute is not only the stories I produce and the book that I produce, but my thoughts and the behind-the-scenes process of what I'm doing when I make my book. And as it went on, I realized that it was that, uh, I guess this falls in, in sharing my thoughts and in that category, but, uh, what I am trying to do and communicate here is a new set of values that I hope to infect people with and the comic book community and culture, uh, And those ideas are getting more and more clear in my head as I go. Because I keep talking about them every week. I keep, uh, I see what I'm thinking. I see what I'm doing. Uh, so it's been really, you know, beneficial for me in that way to do this. Is uh, I get to look at, literally look at what I'm doing and think about it. Um, so... I'm on a journey of figuring out what's important to me and what I should be doing. But while I'm on that journey, I'm finding out a way of doing this and a way of looking at what's important that could apply to others or will apply to others. And it could be a very beneficial, much needed change because I see a lot that's not working. Uh, too many artists I know that, that really don't make enough money, um, from comics, even if they're working professionally, let's say, uh, that, um, or don't get paid when they should have, um, that struggle to produce creative work or meaningful work or keep themselves alive, uh, and functioning in a healthy way. Um, there's a whole lot that's dysfunctional 
in people in this community when uh, we have some feeling, for example, that we need to uh, sacrifice uh, everything, uh, family and, and uh, financial stability and everything to be able to, to do what we love um, or sac- and sacrifice our health to meet uh, a deadline or what the publisher wants. Uh, there's a lot this, that's dysfunctional. And, uh, and I see how it's systemic that the system itself is set up for that dysfunction to occur and um, exploitation of artists to occur. And that's, you know, that's, that falls in with, you know, traditional publishing, but also social media. The idea that as an artist, we're supposed to be our own brand and marketer and uh, build a following and market and advertise directly to people to buy our book and so on. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot that, that I think is, is, is a hindrance, really, uh, that, that, that encourages one to be dysfunctional. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, I'm developing this and, um, the best way to, to share this with people is to lead by example. It isn't just something that I can explain. And although I, I want to explain it more thoroughly as I figure out the words for it, but, um, but it's best done by leading by example. Um, and there's, uh, there's a way that I have chosen to make personally meaningful work, you know, at a pace that I can handle and maintain comfortably without any delusions of financial success or market success, um, where the goal is, you know, increasing my, my, my passion, my enjoyment and my connection with other artists and, and readers, um, and maintaining a practice over a long period of time to produce personally expressive, meaningful work that is not based on what's popular at the time or anything like that. It's, uh, it's very personal, even though my books are not, um, personal stories, uh, autobiography, they, uh, they're deeply personal work. And the more, the more I move that direction and away from worrying about what the, the market wants, what, what it should look like or what stories should be like, or even the, what the length of a comic should be like. Every, every piece of it, the more I move away from that, the more I can move toward finding my own voice and developing it. Some of that comes with maturity and time. Uh, if you, you know, someone that's new at something will, uh, or someone that's young, let's say, could be going... 20 different directions in life. And it's like, well, yeah, I do like, I like this and I like that. I like to do this and that and I, you know, play with this and that. And may, maybe I'll do this or that someday. And I, I want to become great at this, but also that like, that is not going to uh, get you there very well. Um, and that, and, and it comes with, with maturity and stuff. Right. Um, and so that that's one of the things that one of the things that I think is happening to me is that I'm growing in just maturity. I'm getting older. I'm, I'm a few years from forty, um, and I've been making comics longer. You know, eight years. So uh, over time, if you pay attention, there's there's more uh, clarity to be found, more to, more clear understanding and wisdom to be gained. Um, 
and you start to hone in on the one thing that you should be doing that is really like congruent, that's really not a fantasy. Um, Uh, that that that's more whole. That's you being a whole person. So, when making comic books is something you do when you have the free time, or to the exclusion of other responsibilities, then that is a sign of immaturity. Um, it's a sign, and, and I don't I don't mean that as an insult. I mean. Uh, sophomoric I mean uh, not fully formed not fully mature that um, that you know that process of maturing or actualizing uh, will be uh, of reaching a wholeness uh, that that you as an artist is uh, is a part of your life that you're not ashamed of and that fits fully with your life. Um, and you, yeah, you don't have to compartmentalize different parts of your life. Uh, now, you know, yeah, life happens and, and there's things, there's reasons people have struggles to do that. And, um, so I'm not saying that that's the only sign of maturity. I do. I think there's a worthwhile story here, though, to consider. So, uh, becoming whole and congruent, uh, my, I, moving that direction also leads to greater and greater clarity of what is the thing, very specifically, that I should be doing with my time when it relates to art, especially. Uh, but this happens in other areas of life, greater clarity of what I should be doing and what really is important. And that applies to, to the art. So for me, it's making meaningful work, uh, personally meaningful, uh, with, with freedom, to do that with self-expression and not, uh, not too much pressure for it to financially succeed. Um, I feel that the financial pressure, um, or career pressure for success can actually be a detriment to the creativity and quality of your work. And so I've eliminated that. Uh, by coming to terms with uh, needing a, a different means of, of income to sustain myself as I pursue the creative endeavors. And uh, spent several years working towards that. And I've now basically gotten to that place um, where I'm pretty uh, comfortable, um, congruent with between my day job and my art and, and that the day job is, is, is what I was looking for that allows the liberty and flexibility, um, to, to do art as well. Um, so yeah, um, and, uh, it involved, it involved discipline, you know, like getting, by, by, um, just by choosing to stick with something, for example, making one of these videos every week, just by, by choosing to do that and sticking with it, I, uh, I, ref I get to reflect on that. I get to, um, I get to improve upon it, um, by choosing to, work in my sketchbook and study anatomy and put some time into that, I've continued to improve on how I, how I do that studying. What, um, what are the pieces, uh, 
of my practice other than just sitting and drawing a page? What are the, the disciplines, the, the things that I do um, to improve, uh, to, to be at the top of my game, my game, you know, very specifically mine, um, those things start to become more clear and to develop because I insisted on just, just making the time for it, uh, consistent. Um, so I know that has been a part of, a part of it. It's like, it's, it's kind of ironic that, uh, you, we, I want more freedom to make art, but in some sense by taking on uh, actually kind of the opposite of freedom, responsibility and duty, uh, a promise to myself to do it, that uh, in a sense you, you're obligated to do it, you, you, you have to do it whether you like it or not, um, that in a way that's giving up your freedom, um, but it's, it's the way of, of finding it. It's the way of um, becoming uh, your own, your own master, your own force, uh, your own practice, with certainty, confidence. Uh. So, I want to see a lot of other people do that. Uh, I just want, uh, I want to do my part to influence. Uh, the culture, the community to, uh, to move in, in that direction, um, to change the culture, change the way we think about comic books and what success is in comics. Um, uh, and, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's not that I want people to do it precisely my way of doing it. Obviously not. Um, but I see problems. <laughs> and I see, I see help for some people in, in my experience that, that they would relate to it. Um, so I, that's, that's what I got to do. You know, I got to s- say something. Uh, sort of take responsibility. Um, Yeah, I'm still figuring these things out. It's kind of hard to to articulate. But um, I'm getting there. And, and, you know, it's something that I've actually started um, trying to write out. I'm trying to write out what these ideas are. Uh, so very soon I can probably share um, that, at least on one of these draw process videos, um, a much more well-formed uh, argument in case that I'm trying to make much more precise. Um, yeah. And that's good. That's a good thing to do. That's, it's the thing to do for me. And, uh, yeah, it's, it is a, it's a life. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else I need to say. I mean, I could reiterate some points. I know that, Uh, the feeling that if you're not successful in on the shelf next to traditional comic books, uh, publishing and so on, uh, that if somehow you don't fit the, the bill for what the standard is, then you're failing. If you don't make a living from your comics, then you're failing. You don't, you don't have the right to call yourself a comic creator. You know, like these, these ideas are toxic. Um, they are not, not only are they not helping people make better comic books, but they are the sort of ideas that keep people from making good comic books. Like only the establishment benefits from the people feeling that way, like feeling, uh, that they have to measure up in that particular way to have any value. Uh, cause it's, you know, it's the established values of what is good, uh, what a good comic book looks like and so on. Um, 
and it, it and it has a bunch of people thinking that that they're not creative or that you know not doing their best work not trusting their own voice not uh, you know they're going to feel uh, a lot of pressure a lot of judgment uh, and that's not going to help us have better books so that's what i want to see uh, a healthier community healthier creators better comics and if it bears repeating not better in terms of the traditionally established values but uh better in in a new way this um so you know back to marketing what to do with my book uh with with this channel and everything uh there's some clarity in the guiding values the guiding principles of what i'm trying to do and uh if i stay on that path the choices become much more clear um so i'm i'm you know i'm not sure yet but uh, i'm not even sure that kickstarter is the right way to go there's there's a lot that i think is not functioning well uh in comics and uh, in relation to kickstarter um so maybe time to do something different we will see um there's you know there's definitely some conveniences that that kickstarter provides and it's not all bad so i haven't decided on that one for sure Um, I'm excited to have this book done. It's a, it's always uh, it's always a nice feeling to get that book done, get it printed, have it in people's hands. I don't plan on going to a lot of conventions next year, but uh, it, it's going to be nice to have this new book in person. Um, yeah, and I'm you know. I'm not sure what that means. How many readers um, should be my goal? How do I know if this is successful or not? Um, I, I can't really keep track of the online readers, uh, the ones that read on the website. Obviously, printed copies I can keep good track of to know how many I've sold, You know how many printed copies I've made. Um, yeah, the, you know, subscribers is a measurement, uh, sales is a measurement and anything else I might do, uh, could, could be a measurement, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, I, I don't think that, uh, I don't think there's a good answer to this question. I, I, uh, an indie book that that sold a thousand copies would be probably a huge success um and so yeah i don't i don't know i mean maybe 50 is okay with me uh if there were 50 people that really enjoyed my book really appreciated what i'm doing uh enough that they'll they'll make sure to get a copy and pay for that shipping pay that price um and actually you know to physically have it you know in their possession which is saying a lot that's not easy you know it takes a lot to uh to make room on the shelf for it and and to and to pay for it um if there were 50 people that that wanted that um that that might be enough that's 50 people that that it touches and then you know it just comes down to uh instead of measuring my effectiveness by how many people i touch it can be um by how uh 
how much I touched them, right? Like how, how much I cared. Uh, and, 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 you know, that's what this YouTube is too. It's, uh, putting, you know, I can measure myself against that. I'm uh, making an, making an effect on people, helping people. Um, and then, then the book having an effect on people. Uh, and so if I focus on the amount of care I can put into that, um, effort, love, then, um, you know, maybe I can see that effect in, in the emails I get and so on. Um, and th those mean more to me than the numbers of sales. So, yeah, I think that that's probably a healthy way of looking at this. Uh, you know, I don't know. And it, it, it raises the question, you know, what is, what is realistic? Uh, you know, I said a thousand would be a huge number, I think. So, uh, you know, what is, what is actually a realistic number? Um, how many people are actually interested in purchasing indie comics and reading indie comics? Or reading comics at all. It could be a very, very small number. Um, yeah, a small number of, you know, committed people can change the world. A small number of, of people finding, uh, finding you, uh, finding your work and appreciating it, that, that can be enough. Because, I mean, they, they could tell others. Um, if nothing else, they can become, yeah, your your friends and uh, encouragers in uh, in making an art. Maybe it's an archaic art that's not as appreciated uh, by the broader culture, but uh, the culture can change. You know, the the small group of people they can change the culture. So, uh, and I, I see a place for that in the future, too, because uh, when I look at. Uh, there's a possibility for people caring for handcrafted things um, and and personalized um, kind of kind of things. So maybe there's maybe there's an opportunity here. So here's the finished page. When I compare this to early, uh, earlier pages in the book, I think my placement of the values on the color is stronger than it used to be. Um, even just in this, in this book that I've made over the past year, uh, there's, there's a better separation of the values, greater contrast in the, and, uh, yeah, stronger compositions and stuff. So that's nice. And the words I chose here, I like, um, like what I chose, the script was very, you know, rough and boring. But this this adds some depth, um, some richness to it. So, you know, in some sense, there's dialogue that's just um, explaining the facts so the audience knows. And if you just if you have people just say those things, it's boring. So. Um, but it's also the story. I mean, you you have to have the things said. You have to have the story happen. Uh and be communicated. So you have characters say things, but then, uh, is it interesting? Uh, is it saying something or is it just, uh, saying the facts? So, um, yeah, that's where, I mean, that gets into writing, but that, that kind of, uh, searching for, uh, meaning like what's, what's the story here? And like I said uh, earlier on, uh, finding, this moment uh, for Faraday's comment about how these guys aren't aren't scale lickers, you know, not everyone is in this town. Just that moment introduces an idea, right? Uh, uh, it enriches the world, and it, it introduces a an idea into the into the mix. Um, I did sit there for a while, you know. I don't know, at least thirty minutes. <laughs> Uh, with to type words on the page, but I think longer than that, trying to get the right words and think through what what should happen at this moment, because it's almost the last moment of uh, 
of the book. We just have a few pages left. That's it. Uh, I hope you got something out of that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Uh, be the practice of your art, embodying it, uh, discipline, uh, choosing and deciding those, those things to do um, that are uniquely you, that are in the direction towards, towards your, your art and style. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing here. So I will see you next week.